sometimes it's difficult to either get referrals or ask for referrals. Yeah. Um, when you're a newer agent, even seasoned agents um, that work in insurance or real estate, I mean, you get to the finish line with a, an existing client, right? And it's, it's can sometimes get twisted about, Hey, send me someone. You, here's a napkin. Write down five names yeah. of people that I can go out and call and solicit. It's awkward. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're always, I mean, in our office, we're always trying to find like the hack, you know, the, the better way to, to do something. and With better results. With better results. Yeah. So if we're doing this, can we do it better? You know, or, or let's try this and see if we get a better result from it. Welcome to the podcast dedicated to real estate, insurance, and everything in between. Join us as we take you along our own brokerage building journeys with additional wisdom from our network of business experts. Welcome to Bricks and Risk. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Bricks and Risk. I'm Tim Garrity. And I'm Sean Mooney. Tim? Today, we're peeling back the onion. All we're right. talking about referrals, warm referrals, and cold calling. Wow. Okay. I love this topic. Yeah. It's good. What should we do first? We, uh, what do you think? I'm thinking the warm stuff. Yeah. The warm stuff. Let's do that first because that's how you and I operate. Warm butter. Yeah. Oh, totally. All right. Let's do this. So, all right. Here's something I'll, I'll jump into. So warm referrals, let's think about what's the foundation of a warm referral. In my own opinion, the foundation of getting a warm referral from someone is going to be customer service. So you have to work with someone first. And when you're working with that person, you have to deliver. So you have to set expectations up front. You have to execute throughout. And then you got to deliver that satisfied customer at the end. And then if you're able to do all that, that's when you have the opportunity to yep. say, hey, uh, would you give me an online review? Uh, or would you mind dropping my name to friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, anyone in your ecosystem so that I can keep building my business? Because let's be honest, you know, referrals are the lifeblood of any business. Yeah. And this is how it works, right? Like there, or that's like the, how you program it, you know, from start to finish. But Get into like some of the tactics that you're using uh, at Copper Hill to kind of drive them or talk, you know, what's been successful for you guys in implementing to like make sure that you're capitalizing on that. I'd say one big one for us is we do a huge annual client event every year called the Copper Hill Annual. We've, we've done it four times. We would have done it more, but unfortunately with COVID, we weren't able to hold it. And... The reason it started was really my brother, Ryan, and we were in one of our weekly meetings and he had said, I think we should do like a party for like all of our past clients. Coming from Ryan? Right, right. Yeah. I, I mean, think we should have a party. Let's, let's be honest. You know, <laughs> I'm like, what'd you say? Party? All right, we're good. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa let me finish. <laughs> so then he said, uh, I think we should have a party for all of our past clients or the agents at the company. And for our business vendors. So it's like, you know, mortgage and title, insurance, everything. So yep. you, you've been at them from yep. the start. I've been at Ryan's parties. You, you've been at, been at Rise, uh, <laughs> Rise Jams. Um, so basically, I wanted to focus on that because we started doing that a few years in. Yep. And it was because we had already helped a number of clients. So we looked at it as like, we want to give back for the people that not only have trusted us with their service, but also a lot of those people had already given us referrals. So we look at that like, this is an opportunity for all of you to just come out on a Saturday, you know, bring the kids or leave the kids behind, whatever works best for you, and just come out and, and eat and drink and hang out and have a good time on us for like three hours. Yep. So with doing that, I will tell you, every time we have done that, the six months that follow, there's always a few really good referrals that come out of the woodwork. And most of the time it's coming from the people who actually attended the party. Yeah. But I will say, even if someone didn't attend the party, so here's another thing I want to touch upon. It's really the thought that counts. So if we invited someone and they couldn't make it, their kid had a soccer game, you know, they just wanted to spend time at home, whatever it was, the weather was bad, vacation. They still appreciate it. 
they appreciate the thought. And there have been opportunities, I know because I've documented this, where I've gotten referrals from those people post Copper Hill Annual yep. just for the fact that that was a way to reconnect. So I'd say that's one for me. And, and how does that, so that's like from the angle of either a client. Can you talk a little bit about like your team and okay. what the feedback has been from your team that like what they're telling you, like, hey, about this event or like, hey, this, you know, this has been great because, you know, I'm able to invite these people and bring them in. And, you know, that's catapulted me or. Absolutely. Yeah. So we did, it was our first one in literally like, I think almost four years. Yeah. We just did this year. You were there. Yep. Um, had a lot of our agents there. They invite a lot of people as well this year. It was packed. It was. It was and, a great day. And I think, I think some of the best feedback I got was, you know, when I train, when I mentor the agents and I'm trying to have them, again, build more warm referrals, become a referral-based, relationship-based agent, because that's how you sustain your business. So going through all that throughout the year, hey, you should have a client event, maybe two client events. I'm doing one for free. Yeah. All you have to do is bring five people. Just show up. And, and they loved it. They were yeah. like, man, you, re- you guys really executed on that. Like, great spot, great venue. It's like, yeah, that takes a ton of time. That took us months, thousands of dollars. But one of, one of, again, one of my uh, best secrets of, of holding a client event that large, because you were there, and it's not cheap, is you go to your business vendors, and you have them help you out. Yeah. So you have, you're like, hey, can you kick in some money as a sponsor? And again, you're going to come anyway, but bring a couple guests. And I'm going to drop your name or your name's going to be on the invitation. It's going to be on the advertising. So we're, we're propping them up as well. Um, but one thing, actually, now that we're talking about this, one thing I wanted to ask of you, because you just told me this recently, was that you have a new strategy tactic for warm referrals. Why don't you tell me about that? It was really good. Yeah. So we're always trying to game the system. Yeah. And I think what we found was working with our agents in our brokerage was that sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's difficult to either get referrals or ask for referrals. Yeah. Um, when you're a newer agent, even seasoned agents um, that work in insurance or real estate, I mean, you get to the finish line with an existing client, right? And it's it's can sometimes get twisted about. Hey, send me someone. You, here's a napkin. Write down five names yeah. of people that I can go out and call and solicit. It's awkward. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're always, I mean, in our office, we're always trying to find like the hack, you know, the, the better way to, to do something. and With better results. With better results. Yeah. So if we're doing this, can we do it better? You know, or, or let's try this and see if we get a better result from it. Yep. And so what we, what I came up with was everyone, you, everyone uses text messages, everybody. Like you, you call someone on the phone, leave a voicemail. It's like out yeah. in the ether. Yep. They're not, they're not. How many times have you called, left a voicemail? Hey, did you get the voicemail? Oh, so many. Or it's like, even if they did and they saw they it, like back. we look, we look on and then, or they, or they might call back. Yeah. I'm like, by any chance you listen to voice? No, no, no. What'd you say? Yeah. What do you need? And it's like, come on. Yeah. Like, why'd I even do it? So what we, what I, in my mind was like, all right, how can we make this easy for our agents? How can we make it effective way to communicate with our clients? And what's an effective way to get a referral? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want. That's how you build your network. And so what I came up with was literally take your name. So you have a, a real estate agent that works in your office. Yep. They put. Uh, their name, contact information on a contact card. Okay. Like and an actual physical card I'm writing on it, taking a picture or like a digital card? Digital card. Okay. Like, you know, when someone sends their contact, I, I did this yeah. because someone sent me like a plumber's information. Like, hey. When you share a contact in your phone, basically. Exactly. All right, cool. What, like for iPhone, do iPhone, do they have that feature? Yeah, well, well, I mean, if we're really, if we're really getting into this, I mean, uh, iPhones, um, are the reason planet earth is doing well <laughs> and droids really? are actually the reason why it's not. Can you expand on, so, on how the, <laughs> if we're, if we're getting into the iPhone, uh, I would say seven to eight out of 10 would probably agree with me, but keep going. Keep you going probably about, wouldn't be here right now. Keep going the about I, the seven steps it takes to share a contact on, on the droid, pl- on the droid platform. First, you take a picture. 
<laughs> so what we're doing is contact in your phone, contact card, shareable. Yeah. And it's a text message out to your existing client. Okay. Who you just help. After, all right, so it closes. Everything's How done. How soon do you do this? Um, We've been doing it now. We've been kind of like on the dovetails of like just starting it. And what we've been doing is um, taking like Thanksgiving and the holidays as a reason to reach out. Okay. So, hey, how was your Thanksgiving? You know, just kind of get your foot in on the text to get them going. Yeah, it's an opportunity to say happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a great one. Yep, exactly. Enjoy the time with family. And then, you know, hey, it's been great. Hope you had a good one too. Then pivot off of that to say, hey, you know, trying to build my network for this coming year. I attach my contact card. Could you share it out with two people that you know? Yeah, that's that's unbelievable. It's so simple. It's so simple. Did you hear this somewhere? Did you just come did you hear this somewhere? Or did you come no, up with it was it? that plumber, you know, it, it, it was that plumber so that came to me that kind of sparked this that like was the light switch. Yeah, like, wait. Because the referrals is kind of like always tr- something we're trying. It's always. Yeah, you're trying to think like, what else can I do? Like, yeah. how else can I make it clear? Yeah. Because again, like you and I do it. Yeah. Like, but again, we're business owners. Yeah. So we look at it differently because we know that's how our businesses have grown. So we're constantly looking out for other business owners, again, or professionals. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But most people don't own their own business. Well, I think the fail in before is like you're on the phone, right? And you say, hey, Jim. Glad we were able to do business. We know you're happy. We did a great job for you. Could you send three people my contact yeah. information? Never going to work. Right. It's true. Email. So you send an email. Hey, glad we were able to do this for you. Jim, could you send this out to a couple of your friends that you could? Doesn't work. It, yeah. just, it just falls on deaf ears. Text message is like the greased skids. It really, it's just so easy. And it's right there because what they'll do is like, we, we constantly talk to our past clients. Yep. You know, sometimes we're just having a conversation. Sometimes yep. we're talking business, Yep. but it's always going to be there. Yep. Like they might just, all they're going to do is, I don't know, do, does a droid work that way? Can you do this? And actually the screen will move yeah, up. Yeah, You and have down. to like power on. Oh, okay. And then once that, once it like three or four minutes after it like yeah. powers on. <laughs> But that's the, so literally as they're on the phone texting, it's, oh yeah, you know what? I've been meaning to like send my brother your information. Yeah. And, I, and he never did it, but now it's right in front of him. Now I'm thinking about it right there. I don't have to dig through my contacts. It's in an easily accessible spot with the message that says, right. if you don't mind, you know, referrals are the lifeblood of my business. I'm trying to have a better 2024, whatever, however you want to word it. Can you please give my contact card? to one or two people in your network. Yeah. I love it. That's it's, so good. And so, like I told you, we've only been doing this a short time as we, as we came up with this idea. And literally, I mean, I'm like, oh man, I wish I thought of this like yeah. five years ago. All right. Because the traction that we're getting is like gold. All right. So again, we've talked about this before. So we talk about warm referrals and we both operate the same way. This is, this is part of the reason we started a podcast. We're like, we want to talk about some of the things that we don't always hear. Yep. And it's like, let's say you listen to 10 podcasts in a week. Maybe one or two is talking about working with referrals, relationship-based yeah. marketing, like growing your, the other eight or nine are literally like, here's a different way to uh, get 5,000 followers, which again, it, it, it's not to say that it doesn't work, but that's more the cold approach. You're just throwing stuff out into the universe and you're hoping that one of those 5,000 sees value in you and will refer business. Well, it's like, where are the long-term gains going to come from? Right. Are they going to be coming from one of the 5,000 followers or whatever? Right. Potentially. I, I, I never say never. So like it could, <clears throat> but for me, the long-term play is in terms of you referencing, I forget the numbers, but your network and attaching your network to another person's network, um, you know, those relationships are going to be the most fruitful from totally. anything that you can develop from, you know, a marketing standpoint that I'll, I feel out there. I'll give you another good one that kind of like piggybacks off your client approach. So again, so I own a brokerage, Copper Hill Real Estate. 
part of the marketing we do for our brokerage is to grow our agent team. How we grow our agent team, again, I've said this before, we try to lead with value. So we do two happy hours a year. So yeah. like we call them quarterly happy hours. You've been at those. They're, they're more like networking. Rise. Quarterly. Yeah, rise. Happy. You know, rise, rise, boost. Getting fest. a lot of play today. Yeah, Ryan's getting, <laughs> Ryan's getting a lot of shit. Making them out to be this huge party animal. Um, so we do, the, we do the two happy hours, do two guest speakers. And again, then we do a monthly agent newsletter, which I haven't really seen a lot of people do. I only started doing it about a year ago. I always had a, just a newsletter that went out to everyone. Now we have the one for like clients, people in our network, and we have one for agents, which again, we're putting stuff out there. Here's one that's happened to me lately that is similar to what you're talking about, that when I'm networking with agents and I'm getting to know them, we're trying to see, you know, are you happy where you're at? Yeah. Is Copper Hill a good fit, whether you're happy or not? And how can we build a relationship so that maybe at some point we do want to work together? And if we do, again, we're going to work at Copper Hill because I own the company. Like, that's the goal. So you're taking it. So, so just unravel that a little more. You're sending out to agents that aren't with you. Correct. And you're kind of taking their temperature to yep. kind of get a read on. Yeah, maybe they get six newsletters. Yeah. And I have a video on every one of them. Every video is talking about business building tips. It's anywhere between two minutes and six minutes long. Yeah. I put them on YouTube. But again, I'm just putting it out there to link people to the YouTube page, so a landing page. Yep. So one of the things I've been doing lately through my networking with these agents is they'll reach out to me and be like, who's, yeah, who's your roofer? And normally, okay, I'm just going to paint this picture. I hate to I hate to hit the uh, the big box shops the big the big brokerages. Okay, but go ahead. I have heard because I've never worked for one that the vibe and the environment in a big box brokerage is that they hold their good contacts like this, like real close to the vest. They don't want to pass contacts out because one, there's usually like 200, 400 agents in the office. They don't want that person building a better relationship. They just they want to hog their contacts, which sounds awful. <laughs> excuse me, but I know it's common. So one of the things when someone asks me and says, Hey, sounds like a Seinfeld episode. It's just, it's like, Oh, Oh, it's I dumb. have my contacts. And again, no Here. offense. If you work for a large brokerage, I'm not pointing fingers and I'm not making fun. I'm just telling you what I hear slightly. Yeah, slightly. Um, so again, when someone asks me, I say, of course. Yeah. And then I'll even say where yeah. city, or suburbs. Yeah. Because I really want, and those are two different markets. And you and I live yep. on the suburban ring, but we've both lived in the city. Yep. So again, so we get it. But I'll ask that. And then I'll just say, here, take, take my prime roofer. Yeah. And people are just like, this is unbelievable. Not only do they appreciate that for me, but what happens is six months later, I hear from my roofer and he's like, thanks for dropping my name to such and such because it, it really worked out. And I think it's going to go well. Yeah. Or six months down the road, the agent will say, I gave your roofer contact to three different people already, and he or she is awesome. Like, literally, like, so it's kind of similar to what you did. Um, it's, it's not like really... If you're, if you're in Maniunk and you need a plumber, just call Roger Ross. That's very true. Roger's the man. Who does it better? Lived a couple blocks away from me. He's helped me out in a pinch. Uh, pinch. He's, he's like fantastic. the pinch maestro. He actually did the plumbing at my house in Flower Town. He did my house in Amber. Did he really? <laughs> nice. Roger's the man. Roger. We'll drop his info. Yep. Hey, everyone. This is Tim, your favorite Bricks and Risk co-host. But don't tell Sean. I hope you're enjoying this episode, and I'll get right back to it in a moment. Our audience grows through word of mouth. So if you would please take a moment of your time and give us a review on the platform you're on, that would be fantastic. Please also help spread the BNR word by sharing your favorite episode with a friend. We greatly appreciate your time and trust. Now, back to the show. Um, all right, so we're talking about all the good ways that we can do warm referrals. Yep. Why don't we do this? Why don't we dive into something that you and I are not huge fans of, but we've both, we've both done it. Let's talk about some of the, some people just call it cold calling. Let's call it cold marketing. So we can start with calling any which way you want to. How do you want to hit it? Let me define it by saying I don't hate it. Okay. Oh, oh. I actually right. really love it. Yeah. If someone else is doing it. You're going to get married? 
No, if someone else, if someone else is doing, actually, we could parlay that into. Um, <laughs> so, cold calling. Um, where to begin? Everybody hates it. Yeah, it is the worst. Myself included. It is the. Uh, how do you describe it? It's. Uh, Here's how I would describe it. Why do I want to be told no? 95% more than I want to hear a yes. So uh, one would argue like that no, like I forget who says it or the saying goes, is like that no is one no closer to the yes. It's true. So I think that um, you have to have the right mindset to even come into a situation where you, you are doing it, right? Because if you come in to a situation uh, and you're like, I hate this. I'm going to hate this. This is going to be the worst. I'm not going to get anything out of it. You're, you're not going to be. Yeah, you're already kind of failing. Yeah. Because your attitude isn't. Your mindset's not right. Your attitude's not right. And that's everything. And so I think if you go you into it. you got to believe in it. I think if you go into it with the right mindset, and the right mindset isn't, I'm going to make 100 calls, I'm going to make <clears throat> you know, 100 connections and get you know, 100 deals. I think you have to go in with realistic expectations of what's a win look like if I make 100 calls. Right. And I think that 100 calls, and if you connect with, I don't know, 15 people, yep. and you get one or two real kind of connections that can take it a step further. Yep. I think that's the win. The numbers that I have heard in, in just my experience, my business experience, marketing, listening to podcasts, training, all that stuff. This is, this is huge in my industry. It's huge in real estate is that, yeah, it's about 5% success rate. And everyone uses a hundred calls as the example. Cause it's really easy. It's like hundred calls. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to five of them will say yes, let's say. And then the, the, the second factor of that is like half of that will actually work out and turn the business. So let's call it like two to three will work out with a hundred calls. Yeah. Here's a great way to look at it. Here's a positive of it, even though it's not my thing. Make 20 calls and get one yes and feel good. And then, and then take a break that day. Because again, making a hundred phone calls in one day, one is really difficult. So let's be honest. You'd have to focus probably half your work day almost. Because you're going to take breaks, you're going to need a breather, you're going to get on the call with someone for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Like, that's what happens when you just reach out to people. And I've done this in real estate. I haven't really done it to get clients. I've done it more to meet agents. Yeah. And it's been more selective. Like, so sometimes, so let me go to some, uh, something that happens in my world, which I kind of agree with. Like, if you're just going to call random people, like, you have a list of people, you're just like, I want to see if they want to buy, sell, or rent real estate if they know anyone. Like, that is really hard. Yeah. A lot of people will break it down to expired listings. So an expired listing is someone lists their house. Yep. Maybe, you know, most listing contracts are six months. Some are three, but let's call it six. It doesn't sell in six months, and it just expires. And then they just naturally say, we're not going to work together. So rather than say, like, I'm going to terminate. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like you for whatever reason. They'll just say, it expires. So expires are like a natural, it's a natural thing yeah. happening. I don't even think that's cold, right? That's, that's like it, lukewarm. It is still cold because you don't know them. So yeah, but you, you at least know that they're like you know, there's in a the need. market. Yeah, but why did they let, the, let it expire? Maybe, maybe they're like, maybe my plan changed. Maybe I'm not moving. I guess my, like just from the, the framework of like, it would be like me calling a, a person for insurance. All right, here we go. This is where Mooney picks it apart. Okay, keep going. So... If I know that that person, okay, so this is perfect. So like, let's yeah. say there's some program and it says, hey, Joe is looking for insurance. Yep. Joe's like out there in the metaverse shopping for insurance. Like avatars? Yeah. <laughs> and I know that, right? Okay. Yep. And I'm able to like connect with him. That's way different than you know, like, he's, you, know he's a, you know he's a potential customer. Peggy Sue All watching right. TV by the phone. And All right, I so call, let's let's do this. Yeah, let's call it. You make ten calls, you get one with people like that. Expired listings. Let yeah. me get let me get back to it. So expired listings, I actually think are a more productive way to call sure. call just for that yeah. that point. Again, I feel like the phone is intrusive. 
that's just me. I, if that's your first time reaching out, you're not leading with value. You're leading asking for something. Now, maybe it leads to value on the phone. Maybe you're really giving them valuable advice or information or just confidence in what they just went through is normal. So that's all valuable. But going into it, you might, get, you might give them absolutely nothing. And that, that is probably, for me personally, that is why I don't do that. Because my whole mantra is I'd rather put something out there of value first in some way, shape, or form to get to a conversation, to get to figure out what their need is, and then see if I can help or anyone in my network can help. So in real estate, I'll go, I'll kind of go there. All right. Don't they do the, um, like this house sold, so then they market to like someone in the neighborhood because chances are in the next six months, someone's going to sell. Yeah. You mean like circle prospecting? You yeah. familiar with what that is? Uh, no, tell me more. All right. Circle, circle prospecting is, is not a bad one. Again, I, I, I would attribute this as like cold marketing, like an expired listing. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's where I was kind of going with it. So let's say I sell a house, one, two, three main street. Yep. And let's say whether it went well or not, let's say it happened right away in this market, you know, we're December, 2023. There are still bidding wars in some markets. It's hard to believe, but there's an inventory issue. So even though interest rates are seven plus percent right now, there's still not enough homes to buy. There's more people that want to buy them. So if there's an inventory issue, what do you want to focus on? How do I bring more inventory, inventory to the market? So let's say you sell a home, 123 Main Street. It goes well. Then what you do is you draw a concentric circle around there, you know, quarter mile, mile, number of homes, whatever you want to do, that says, I'm going to blanket these homes with either a postcard, with a letter, with whatever, however yeah. you're trying to do it. That says... I sold this home. Here's what happened. You can share some information. You can't sell, you can't share personal information. No, no, yeah. But you can say you can say, hey, it took three months. We had fifty showings, but we got five thousand under asking. So they're like, wow, this person is good and patient. Yeah. Or you could say it was on the market for one day. I had ninety five showings, uh, or ninety five people came through the open house. I had seven offers, and we got twenty thousand over asking. No matter what the story is, you're sending that out to that network to say, this is what happened. If you're thinking about selling, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, but you're leading with value. Like you really are. You're giving them valuable information. Like they might not even know that home sold. Maybe they just don't look online. You know, maybe they missed the sign. They live in a street that they never go down. So they might not know. So that's number one. Let's say they did drive by the house the whole time but they didn't know what happened. Now you're informing them. And let's say they, <laughs> excuse me, they drove by the house every day. They watch closely online. They know exactly what happened. Now that you've reached them out and given them a few details that they didn't know, maybe they were driving by the house every day because they're really, really interested in selling. And they want to really, yeah. they want to keep a close eye. So circle prospecting is good. I just actually taught a sales meeting on this not that long ago. Went really well. Um, it's not something that, I do regularly. It's something I have done. Have I ever gotten other business out of it? Nope. Have I gotten calls or people reaching out? Yes. Yeah, so. we, uh, we do. It, I guess we term it as like geofencing. So like fencing out an area geographically, like a specific one. Okay. And I know that they're one of our uh, high net worth carriers. will do that like on our behalf. So if you write an account in, you know, a high net worth neighborhood. Yeah. They kind of know that, all right, this is the target client that we want to kind of go after. Okay. And they'll send out these postcards to say, hey, we just wrote Sally down the street. You know, this is what we did. Call it geofencing? Yeah. It's so funny that we do so many of the same things in our industries, yeah. yet they have completely different yeah. terminology. Like, Sphere of influence. Yeah. And center yeah. of influence. So How um, weird. Yeah. I mean, there's... I think there's cold, there's warm, and then there's kind of in between. And I think that like some people will shy away from the cold, the warm is the best, but there are also some in-betweens that like you can really double down on and can really, you know, build out business with those types of tactics. All right. So let's, let's go over another thing with, with the cold approach. Let's focus on the phone because we were just talking about that. A lot of times... People don't just say cold marketing, they say cold calling. I'm reaching out yeah. to people on the phone. I want to get them on the phone. It's an effective way. 
to build rapport, to let them know my tone of voice, how confident I am, how knowledgeable I am, how good at sales I am. So let's talk about the cold calls themselves. It's yeah. pretty easy to do. Cody Askins has one. He talks about this. And I think it's on YouTube or one of his stations. And he talks about like... Cody Askins, is he's a big insurance guy. Yeah. For those who don't know. He does, con I guess, consulting and, you know, uh, that type of stuff. Do you, but, listen, do you listen to his stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he has really like, you know, there's some people that are out there that are splashy in this. and He kind of gets down to like these tactics. Like, let me show you here. Let me take your hand and show you how to do this. Yep. So he's, um, he's one that I kind of look at for like, hey, if I want to do this, like, you know, does he walk through this scenario? But he, he kind of tells you like when doing cold calling, it's like that first six seconds of like engagement. Yep. You know, and he kind of walks you through is to like already go in like you're familiar with the person. Never say, hi, is this, no. hi, is this <laughs> Mr. Smith? You say, hey, Bob, uh, it's Tim. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and so he walks you through and um, we've actually done it in the office, kind of taken what his template is. Okay. And um, do you do this? Yeah. Regularly? Not regularly. How often would you say you cold call? At least once a month to try to Whoa, like... Wow, that's pretty regularly. Yeah. Dude, I never do it. Yeah, well... Hey, to each their own. Different strokes, different folks. That's right. But um, it's funny, the agent that we have in our office now, Pat, um, I remember like months and months ago when we kind of like said, all right, let's do this. Let's start this. Yeah. His first like 10 calls, he got four people's information. Whoa! <laughs> So he's batting 400. He's like, whoa. I'm like, I'm going to the All Star game. I'm going to Hawaii. And I'm like, listening. And I'm like, are they still on the phone with you? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That is too funny. And like, you know, it, it, it ends with like, you're not like trying to like make the sale on the phone. Yeah. You're just trying to get an email address or like have them half commit to yeah. like the idea of like, hey, would you be open to like having me review your information? You've caught their attention. Yep. Now you need to get more information that yep. you don't have to call them right. to reach out. Like again, emails and text messages, like you said, you can text very valuable information. You can email. Can't really do it on the phone. So, yeah. so that's really smart. Well, it's good too, because I think sometimes you think like nobody's doing calls now. So like my phone doesn't ring. Yeah. So like sometimes when the phone rings, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, who could it be? And you just kind of like catch them at the right moment, at the right time. And yep. sometimes if it's the right person with the right personality, they're just willing to talk. And, oh, yeah, yeah, my wife handles that. Um, you know, here's her email. Just shoot an email over to her. I mean, I think you'd find that like nowadays, because nobody really does it. Yeah. And people like Jeb Blunt, you know, they'll talk about it. Like one more call, one more call, one more call. Yeah. And I think there's, it's kind of an art. You kind of like, ha you, you can't, you know. Most people aren't going to go in and just have it down cold, yep. which is why I kind of would go to some you of these. You got to get your reps in. Yep. Which is why I would kind of like look at some of these people that do it and use it effectively. Yep. Because th it, they have it down. You know, it kind of is a scientific approach as to like, make sure you're doing this, make sure you're doing this, make sure you're doing this. And I think that because people don't do it now, they rely on so many other things. That potentially could be an opening, um, you know, for people that want to try to build out going that route. I think that's awesome perspective. So we're going to close this one out with that. So thank you for tuning in to another edition of Bricks and Risk. See you soon. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Bricks and Risk. Our goal is that you walk away with one or two valuable nuggets and we greatly appreciate you sharing your time with us today. You can find all BNR episodes on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and anywhere else you get your podcast content. Until next time, keep learning and keep growing.